What is it about that number six? In the beginning, when God created the earth, he came down and he looked and he saw that darkness was upon the deep. It was dark everywhere. And he didn't look at that and say, oh man, it is dark out there. But rather he called for the light to come. And when that light came and that light turned on, that light was the Lord Jesus Christ. The light came before the sun was made. The light was the Lord Jesus Christ that God called forth. The first mention of the number six that we have in the Bible is in that first chapter of Genesis when it's talking about God made man out of his own image. He created him. And at the end of that partic those particular few verses there, after he's talking about making man, it says in the evening and the morning were the sixth day. So man was created on the sixth day, the first mention of six in the Word of God. I thought it was interesting because as I thought about that, and I thought about how man likes to do everything himself, he likes to take it from here. How many times have I in my own life said, oh, thanks God, I'll take it from here. And I feel like I can complete it. I can do it. But God said, no, to wait on to him and to rest in him because he is the one that finishes the work. And had man been created before that sixth day, before that last day, I'm sure man would have been right in the face of God saying, God, I can help you with this creation. I can do it from here. But God in his wisdom brought forth man on the sixth day. The very next day, the seventh day, man's full day on this earth, the seventh day, God made a day of rest. And it looks like man could have learned from that, that God, the most important thing in following God and being in God is that rest of the seventh day. But we don't understand that. In all of my years, I still don't get that at times. When things come in and when it seems like things are just going wrong on every side, on every angle, Lord, what can I do? I'm always wanting to know what I can do instead of resting and believing that God is going to take care of it, that it is nothing that I can do, it is nothing that I have done, and it's nothing that I will do, but God has done it all. God's first teaching was to rest and to rest in Him. Father, when all things seem to be crashing down and when all things seem to be coming down, to rest in Him. I've had an interesting month today. One month ago today, I started having telephone issues, trying to go with a new company and trying to port my telephone number, take my telephone number with me. And for one month, I have worked diligently at that. And inside of this month, my computer decided to crash. And then yesterday, my battery in the car was dead. So everything seemingly that could go wrong has been trying to go wrong this last month, starting a month ago today. But God is teaching me just rest in him. He's on the job. He hasn't forsaken. He is working to perform his will in my life. Have you ever thought about the walls of Jericho coming down? Man had to walk around those walls six times, once a day for six days. There's something significant about that. Man coming to the end of himself. And then even on the seventh day, they had to walk around six times before anything happened. I'm sure as those people were walking around that wall, 
<clears throat> they weren't allowed to speak and say anything out loud. But I just imagine their minds were churning. God, if you'd let us take this out, we could bring those walls down. God, we could do something about this. Look, here it is. We've walked the sixth day and, and finished the course, and there's not one pebble that has fallen off that wall. There's not one thing that has happened. But God had already told them the walls were coming down. God had already given them a place of victory, and that's where we live today. We are in a place of victory in Christ Jesus. I'm sure that they were saying, God, isn't there something we can do? Are we not holding our mouth right? Probably not, because we're probably pro complaining about our issues. And just as they marched, all they could hear was the sound of the feet as they marched round and round and round that city. And I'm sure they had the question, God, did we even hear you right? God, are we even following you? God, what is going on? Surely there's something. And still nothing just going round that wall over and over again. And then on that seventh day, six times around, and nothing, nothing, nothing. And then they were told on that seventh time around to open their mouth and shout with a shout of victory. And as they opened their mouth, the walls came tumbling down. And those very walls that had held them outside of that city became the bridge over which they could go into that city. Sometimes God has to quieten our spirit before he can actually do a work in our lives. On that seventh time, their courage and their strength and their faith rose up. They remembered the word of the Lord and they said, Lord, we're, we're tired, we're worn out, but now it's up to you and if you don't do it. But as they shouted the shout of victory, those walls came down. Their mouths open. There's a connection with our mouth proclaiming our victory and victory being ours. We need to determine to speak and speak to the mountain. Speak to the walls. In Mark 11, 22, it tells us that when we speak to that mountain, that mountain has to obey us and has to be cast into the sea. I'm telling you today, do not be discouraged and do not be disheartened for victory is ours. I don't care what it looks like in your household. I don't care what it looks like in our nation or our world. Jesus is still King of Kings and he is still Lord of Lords and he is on the job. We are anointed to complete our assignment. Whatever God has given us to do, we're anointed to do it. We have to get rid of man's ability and man's willingness to, man is willing to do and trying to do, but we've got to not rest in our own laurels and we've got to not rest in our own strength and we've got to not work it out ourselves, but we've got to believe the word of the Lord and rest in him, come to that full rest in him. I'm reminded also of when uh, uh, it came to pass with 1 Kings 18, <clears throat> and Elijah uh, pro proclaimed to Ahab the king, it's going to rain. It hadn't rained for years, and he proclaimed, it's going to rain. And then he ran up the mountain and started praying. I'm sure that after he made that declaration, there was those thoughts, Oh my goodness, what did I just say? What just came out of our, my mouth? And he sent his servant six times. That servant went and looked in the sky, looking for a, even a glimmer of hope that there was going to be rain. No rain whatsoever. And the word tells us that Elijah bowed on the ground and he was calling on God. He was doing all he knew to do. And the seventh time, as he sent that servant out, that servant came back and said, Master, there's a little cloud out there about the size of a man's hand. 
And Elijah said, let's get to the city as fast as I, we can. There's coming the rain. I'm telling you today, when we get rid of our own strength, when we come into the rest of the Lord, when we come out of that sixth day and we walk into that seventh day in the rest of the Lord and the victory of the Lord, we are going to see God manifest everything he has spoken. Not one word of God is given without fruition. Not one promise, one word in his word that he's given us. Not one word will fall to the ground, but it will come to pass even as the Lord our God has said. If you are weary and if you are uh, heavy laden today, I'm telling you there's a rest in the Lord Jesus Christ we can come into. What is man? Psalm 8 says, what is man that you are mindful of him, O God? What is man? We have nothing in ourselves, but it's all to do with God the Father, Jesus, his Son, and the Holy Spirit that causes us to do and to be the things that we are doing and the things that we are being. If we listen to him, if we rest in him, we are assured of victory. I don't know what this year holds. I don't know what what we are facing tomorrow. But I do know this, as we rest in the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to obtain victory. I want to encourage you today, lean on the everlasting arms of the Lord. Whatever is going in on, just say, Lord, I let go of all of my thoughts, all of my struggles, all of my situation, and I lean on you because when I lean on you, I know you're taking me through. I want to assure you today, we're going to see victory in 2014. I don't know how it's coming. I don't know what is going to take place, but I know that whatever is swirling around us as we rest in the Lord, as we come out of that sixth day, out of everything man can do, and we come into the seventh day, everything that God does, we will see the victory. I just bless you today that you will hear the Lord speak to your heart. I bless you today that the peace of God will come to you beyond understanding. I speak to you today that you come into the rest of the Lord and say, I give up. I give up, I put myself to rest, and I totally lean on you, God. Our God is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ever ask or think according to the spirit that dwells in us. God bless you today. May the Spirit of the Lord rise up in you. May you receive encouragement. May you be filled with the joy of the Lord. The joy of the Lord is our strength. And may you feel and sense the joy of the Lord as never before in your life. God bless you.